Hello students and parents, this is Jeff Rehm at North Tower High School. I'm recording a quick video tutorial to show you exactly how you need to go about making your course requests for the next school year. So I'm in Aries, as you can see on the screen, and this is the home page of a demo account that I'm using. So your screen might look slightly different, but essentially there's much of the same information. You'll see a few more options on my screen, but you can just ignore some of those and just follow along as I show you exactly where you need to click um, to make sure that your course requests go in accurately and correctly and on time. So once you log into the student's Aries portal, you should be able to see all of the courses that students currently enrolled in with the grades, hopefully not as poorly as these ones, um, this demo student's grades where the attendance is bad. Um, but where we're going to actually need to go is up under the student information tab. So when you hover over that tab, you'll see a whole list of different things. Um, many of these things you will not see on your account. Um, they're here for demo purposes. You'll only see the, 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 the basic ones here. And so what we actually need to find is down here underneath course request entry. And you'll only be able to see this when we actually activate it for you. So if you try to do this ahead of time, you might not see this um, until your window opens. So please make sure you understand that piece. Click on course request entry. When we get there, it's going to take us to a new page. And you can see we have a whole bunch of stuff already entered. You might see some courses pre-assigned. We do that on purpose for different grade levels, like in, the, in English 9 or 10. We'll automatically assign certain classes that all students have at a certain grade level. Um, and on the, the packet that you received at home, you'll sit, get some information about how to possibly replace those classes. Say, for example, if we added you to a US history course and you wanted to take a AP US history course, you would simply click the red X next to the name of the course here. So if we wanted to take out English 9, we click that and it would say remove primary and associated alternate course. So if you do have an alternate on the left, right hand side, which we'll talk about in just a second, it will remove both, just so you know that. Can you see it disappear? So we'll remove a couple different of these classes just to give you an example so I can re-add some of these courses back in. Alright, and let's take out a Spanish course. So you see we have a few classes here already. And so if we wanted to say, for example, add a math course, you see the mathematics section here on the left-hand side. We need to go up here to the upper right, and it says filter courses. Okay, and so you can do a couple different things. The easiest way that I think, because we don't have tons and tons of courses available for you to select, is to go to the subject area filter and select mathematics. When you do that, it's going to show you all the different mathematics courses available for your grade. Okay, we are not going to have this many classes. You'll likely see an integrated math or calculus class or something like that. You'll probably only see two or three different options you can choose from. And for math, it's really just the next level, unless for some reason you did not pass your first um, or second semester of the last course. And it's not really time for you to move forward. So for this student, we'll go ahead and select Algebra A. That's a ninth grade student, so it's a pretty standard class for a ninth grader. To select the course and add it to our class, all we have to do is click that and it's going to say request and hit OK. And you can see it now shows up here. If you wanted to create, um, get some more information about the course, you can click on that little I button next to it and it will walk you through a little bit of the pieces of information you might need to know about mathematics or algebra A. On things like your electives, so when we're looking down here at electives, we added leadership. If we go down here and select electives, it's going to give you all the different options available. All right, so say, for example, I wanted to add AVID. We don't have AVID at our school, but this school does, this fake school does. I click that and do AVID. But say, for example, I can only select one elective. I only have one elective slot left because we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight classes already. We only have six slots. That means we need to actually remove probably one of these sciences. Okay, we shouldn't have two sciences, so that gives us kind of six classes, now seven with these two. We really need to pick maybe one of those to make our six classes, unless the class is an independent study class and doesn't take a spot. So what that means is maybe we can't have both of these classes. So what I would suggest doing is this is a great place to use an alternate. An alternate is a class that if for some reason a, a certain class, maybe you wanted, say, an art class or... Um, a certain CTE class and it just doesn't work with your schedule or it fills up or um, you know there might be something different that you wanted that might be your second choice this is a great opportunity to add your alternate one it saves time okay because then I have to call you down or, or contact you to figure out okay well you can't have this class what class is your next best choice 
Um, same thing with science. When you get to the upper level sciences, for example, there's a lot of different options for you in 11th and 12th grade. And so say, for example, if you signed up, your first choice is AP Chemistry, and the AP Chemistry class maybe doesn't get offered, or if it's not in a class period that works for your the rest of your classes that you'd actually need, we need to have a, a different science class that might work better. So that might be an AP Physics class or something like that. But with this leadership example, we're going to take out Avid. We're going to actually add it here as the alternate. So you can see it's yellow because I clicked the Add Alternate button. And I'm going to click Avid. And it's going to say Request Avid. And you'll see it show up here underneath the alternate request. Okay, so first request is leadership. and if, But if leadership doesn't work, I know that you are, your next best option would be Avid. And that just helps me there. We would take this out of your normal request because now it's an alternate. So that's basically it. Once these things show up here, your requests are in. There is no submit button. Okay, and that was the issue that we've had in the past is people are looking for a button to click saying send this request. Um, that is not a process you need to worry about. As soon as these things show up here, they're showing up in the system. So don't worry about hitting submit. And then also, anytime while your window is open, you can actually go in and make changes. So if I requested these courses on Monday, the window's open through Friday and I changed my mind or I talked to some of my friends and I said, yeah, you know, I kind of want to take independent study PE instead of PE. You can come in here and just X out PE, remove it from your course requests, go to physical education over here and pick a different PE class. Okay, so if we want to say advanced dance for some reason. Okay, and now that's in there. So you can do that as many times as you want while your window is open. So that's something that we'll tell you at your meetings um, and in your packets of when those when that window is open for you. So please just pay attention to that because that's an important piece. Um, after you're done, you can go back in here to course requests. And once it loads, it should show you all of the different classes um, that you've actually requested. And you can double check that that's in there. Um, this really doesn't give you a whole lot. This is what we use to kind of schedule classes, so you don't really need to know that. And just remember, these course requests are not your actual schedule. Um, they will be worked on throughout the entire spring time frame, and, and hopefully we'll have a good idea of our final schedule to get schedules out before you leave for the summer vacation. And you'll have your actual schedule, um, tentative schedule, of what period you're going to have, what teacher you'll have, and so on and so forth, that you'll be able to plan over the summertime for classes that you might be interested in taking. Uh, please do pay attention to the add drop period. Um, that's also in your scheduling packet. If you have any questions, please email or give me a phone call or set up an appointment with me. Um, if you've done your four-year learning plan, this is a great um, opportunity to pull that up from Aries or if we printed it out. Um, I'm sorry, not from Aries, from Naviance. And you can actually use that. It's a great tool. It's kind of a guideline to help you kind of realize which classes maybe you're planning on taking. Again, if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out. Good luck making your course requests, and we're looking forward to working with you um, in the upcoming school year.